YouTube, what is good? It's your man Ribs from Doing Film Things. Every single week I drop a new video about film photography. So if you're into that kind of thing, definitely go ahead and subscribe. So this week I'm trying out something very different than the usual. Oftentimes I kind of go out with a camera, put a whole roll in there and just shoot and kind of have no plan and see what I get. And then when the roll's done, obviously I'll go develop and take care of that. This time around we're gonna do something different. I actually was thinking of just putting some film in my camera and going to capture one specific photo. Before I say anything else, let's go ahead and look at some footage from that day and let's also check out the pictures as well. Yo, what's going on y'all? So I'm on my way right now to the Waterloo Bridge here in London and I'm actually just gonna shoot a few frames on Kodak Portra. I have that loaded right now and I'm not gonna shoot the whole roll um, precisely because there's one specific picture that I have in mind that I think I'm gonna capture. So. My goal is simply to get on that bridge, take a few photos of the scene that I think I want to get, and then actually cut that out in the darkroom and just develop that strip while leaving the rest of the film in the container. One of my favorite things right now of being in London during this coronavirus kind of season is actually biking all over the city. I just hop on a, on what they call the Boris bike, you know, one of those um, city owned bikes that you pay for and you drop them off at different um, dock stations. So I'm gonna hop on one of those right now and it should be about a 20 minute ride to Waterloo and then I'll get off and walk to the middle of the bridge. So I'll see you there. All right, so I'm chilling here. Dropped off the bike and I'm just kind of hanging out across the street from the bridge. Basically, it's still very bright out and I'm looking to shoot in the kind of like late sunset dusk time. So probably have another 30 minutes to kill here. And my goal today is to capture some of that like late sunset um, color from the sky. So with me today, I actually brought my EOS 650. And I picked this camera specifically because A, it works with all my Canon lenses and I'm gonna be using a long telephoto lens because that's the, the composition that I have in mind right now. And the other reason is that I can actually open this camera and take out the roll in the dark room and just cut off the exposed part. This particular camera just Kind of does it like a normal SLR, one of those old school manual ones where it's just one by one by one and then at the end you have to rewind the whole thing. Alright y'all, we're on the bridge right now and the clouds are looking awesome, the sky's looking great and the sun is now below the horizon just a bit almost. Um, still have some of that golden light peeking through but it's now starting to settle beneath the horizon. So pretty soon we're gonna to start to see a nice little show, but even with these blue skies, the sun and the, the clouds that you see right now behind these buildings are just looking epic. Uh, they're like this alone would be good, some good shots. And honestly, I was only coming out here for one shot, but you know, I can't help it. I've taken like 10 photos already. Hopefully I don't finish this roll of portrait before I get the shot that I want. So I'm gonna to have to be disciplined and hold up. So I told you earlier that I had a plan in mind of just taking one photo. Turns out that specific photo that I wanted didn't really look the way I was hoping it would, so I ended up taking a whole bunch of other pictures that I like way more than what I had in mind. Specifically, it was this photo. I wanted to get some really good clouds and color behind the Westminster buildings. You know, you see Big Ben there, and that just never really happened. The buildings look interesting and I like the composition, but ultimately the colors and the clouds, that is what would make this photo worth it to me. Um, especially since I was dedicating so much attention to just get that one shot. It never happened, so I took a lot of other photos. And you know what? That's cool with me because I got a bunch of photos that I actually really, really like. I find with film photography, you really have to kind of have an open mind and be flexible. I also find that you should always bring extra film in case, you know, some new shots appear that are beyond what you had in mind. And you don't want to get stuck not capturing something because you don't have any more film. In this case, I had plenty of film, but I have had this happen to me before where I finish a roll and I think I'm all good. And then here there's all these other opportunities to get some cool pics as well. And I miss them all because I don't have any more film. So even though I think those Westminster pictures were a bit of a bust in my mind, I completely love the photos that I got of the clouds themselves, especially the ones with the London eye featured in them. 
the clouds are just so big and robust and they're really thick, you know, you really feel like there's so much three dimensionality and texture. I'm just really impressed with the clouds. And I decided to get a bit artsy, you know, and use a lot of negative space with regards to the London eye. It's obviously featured prominently in these photos, but in some more than others, it actually occupies very little space as compared to the rest of the image that has all of those clouds, those big puffy clouds. I also decided instead of using only the zoom lens to really, you know, get in close and capture some of those details, I would actually put on a wider lens and capture the overall scene as you see it. So I did that for a bunch of these photos and I actually have a set of three exposures here that were bracketed. So we have minus one, zero, and then plus one. And I was really curious which one was gonna be the best exposure of the three, especially because a lot of people say you should overexpose Portra. Sometimes you just say shoot it as is, but you know, I wanted to see it for myself. And I was pleasantly surprised. I definitely don't like the underexposed one, sort of the minus one, but I think the plus one actually looks potentially the best here. Um, it's a little bit flat for my kind of liking, and I think that's the problem with overexposing portrait. You definitely lose a bit of that saturation, but it just looks really good. It's soft, it's moody, it kind of gives us this really good vibe, and you can't really beat that. The kind of middle exposure or the normal exposure, I think looks great as well, but it's a bit more contrasty because of the fact that there's less light in the shadows. So overall, I'm actually really impressed with how portrait handled this. And you know, of course, I still find myself wishing for a bit more saturation, but that's just a personal preference of mine. I really do appreciate though how Portra can handle this dynamic range without really destroying any of the detail. And of course, it also kind of captures the colors well without really over baking them. Um, I think for most people, they really appreciate the fact that Portra gives you a nice even exposure of whatever's in front of it. And you don't really have to worry about any you know interesting color changes or anything like that. Of course, I can't do all this work and not print anything in the darkroom as well. So I'm actually gonna take this image right here the one with the, the really good cloud cover over the London eye, and that's the one I'm gonna print in the dark room. Let's go ahead and jump in the dark room. Not going too much in depth today about the exact process, um, leave that for some other videos, but here I definitely want to show you what my final result is. This image right here is a seven second exposure with the appropriate color settings. I didn't have to fiddle too much with this one, I think the only problem I had was there was too much yellow in my image, so in the end there I ended up filtering the yellow more in order to get rid of that color just a bit. And I'm pretty happy with what I got. It's a very simple print, not really any need for dodging and burning or anything like that because it's a very even exposure. The key here was to really get that blue to pop and to also get some contrast in the clouds. So I'm pretty happy with the print and I think we're all set here. It's interesting, I kind of went away from shooting a lot of portrait because of the price, but also because I found a lot of value in some of those other cheaper films. I really like how they perform despite the fact that they're cheaper. Of course, a lot of those cheaper films have their own characteristics that really give you less of that clean slate that portrait gives you, but I appreciate them. Nonetheless though, shooting portrait here in this particular scene was really enjoyable and I, I think I appreciate portrait a bit more because I feel like I put it through a test, you know, exposing it to such a big dynamic range and some bold colors and, and a lot of contrast in the sky. So I'm really happy to have kind of a bit of a renewed appreciation for portrait and I definitely plan on using it a bit more. Let me know in the comments, I'm really curious, do y'all think portrait is as good as it gets? Is it a bit overrated? Is it worth the money? What's your experience with portrait? Am I the only one who kind of likes to stay away from it? Let me know in the comments. I'm really curious to hear what all of y'all have to say. All right, y'all, that's what I got for this week. So if you liked the video, please go ahead and leave me a like. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do it so you do not miss a thing. Until the next video, y'all, peace.